in this season of light, we light this candle as a reminder of the light that is ever present, the light that always goes with us. May we carry this light of hope and peace and justice and love everywhere that we go. As we gather for worship this morning from wherever you might be, I invite you now to just take a moment, perhaps light your own candle, take a breath or two, close your eyes if that's comfortable. Just find yourself shifting into a different space, a different place, a time of coming together in worship, even though we are not physically together. I invite you to just center yourself for this time together. I invite you to join with me in our call to worship. It is offered responsively and you'll see it coming up on the screen now. Gather us in the brokenhearted and the joyful. Gather us in the weak and the strong. Gather us in the fearful and the brave. Gather us in the young and the old. Gather us in to sing of God's works. Gather us in to praise Jesus Christ. Gather us in to worship and wonder. Gather us in to know of God's love. And let's join our hearts in prayer. God of spirits clean and unclean, we come just as we are, ever hopeful that you are who you say you are, the one who calls us into new life, who calls us to let go of those things that are no longer serving us well, the one who brings hope and healing. Open us up to your presence, break open our hearts so that we may feel your love in us and that we may pour out your love on others. May it be so. Amen. This morning, our psalm reading is Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11, and we will offer it responsively and with a sung refrain, as always. And so we begin with the singing of the refrain. Mm -hmm. 
How good it is to sing praises to God. How pleasant to laud the Most High. You are building Jerusalem, O God, and gathering the scattered exiles of Israel. You are healing the brokenhearted and binding up their wounds. You count the number of the stars and call them all by their names. Great are you, O God, and mighty your power. Yes, and your wisdom is infinite. You raise up the lowly and bring down the wicked to dust. Sing to God in thanksgiving, make music on the harp to our God, who covers the sky with clouds, who prepares rain for the earth, who makes the hills green with grass. You give the cattle their food and the young ravens when they cry. You set no store by the power of a horse nor by the strength of a warrior's thighs. But your delight is in those who revere you, in those who rely on your mercy. So this morning I'm working on a little bit of an art project, not really like artsy artsy, but I've been pulling out some of my uh, paper and I have my scissors and my markers and my tape and I have been working on tracing my hand and then obviously getting it cut out and I'm going to make a whole bunch of them and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with them but the reason that I'm thinking about hands this morning is because in our scripture reading that we're going to hear read in just a minute there are a lot of things being done with hands so Jesus we are going to hear he reaches out his hand to heal Simon's mother-in-law and then she reaches out her hand to help get up and then Jesus uses his hands to lay them on other people so that they can be healed and then Jesus near the end of the passage he is praying and so I imagine him folding his hands in prayer like we often do. And then right at the very end, he says, you know, they're going to go on to the next village. And so I imagine him pointing with his hands. And so I was thinking about all the things that we do with our hands. And maybe you can think of some, but I'm gonna show you some pictures of different things that we can do with our hands. And maybe you can think of others and you can talk about it with your family. But here's some hand pictures for you. We can use our hands for baking, for playing sports. Some of us play the piano or maybe another musical instrument. Maybe you like to build with Lego or some other sort of building um, activity. We can use our hands to care for our pets. Sometimes we can use our hands to hurt people. We can fold our hands in prayer like Jesus did. There are lots of ways, as I said, for us to use our hands. And so I've got a couple of hands um, cut out here. Now I'm going to make some more. And then I have um, my markers as well. And what I'm going to do on my hands here that I've, that I've traced and cut out is I'm going to think about 
a good way for me to use my hands in this uh, coming week. And so I'm thinking, you know what? I can use my hands to um, cook supper. That's gonna be one way. And then I can use my hands for, hmm. Can use my hands for giving somebody a hug. And then you can either take your hands and like stick them up somewhere where you're gonna see them, the bathroom mirror or on the refrigerator or something. But what I'm gonna do with mine is I'm gonna take my tape and then I have these like skewers that I got from the kitchen, but it's what I had in the house. So I'm going to tape my uh, hand to like a skewer like that and then I'm going to put them in this vase so that when I'm done I'm going to end up with a lovely little hand bouquet that will kind of look like this when it's all done and on the back because that's easier to read. I've written the things that I'm going to do and that will be a reminder for me. And so, you know what, you might have something, uh, some things that you can think of, that things that can do you can do with your hands that would be good. Um, because sometimes we use our hands, as I said, to hurt people. But this will remind us of the ways that we can use our hands for good. The Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with the fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak, because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went looking for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you! Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our scripture reading this morning picks up exactly where we left off last week. It's still the same day, in fact. It's the Sabbath day. Jesus had spent some time preaching with authority and had also healed the man who showed up that day, the one with the unclean spirit. Remember him from last week? And so you might think that he is ready for a good afternoon nap. I mean, for me, in normal times when we would gather for Sunday morning worship, I almost always was craving a good nap by mid-afternoon. But not Jesus. They head to Simon's house where he continues his work by healing Simon's mother-in-law. Then maybe there's a, a little respite there, time to grab a bite to eat, and then the crowds are thick again as the sun goes down. So it's no wonder that Jesus goes off to find some space and time to pray by himself. But that doesn't last long now, does it? So there's a lot going on in Jesus' first couple days of public ministry, and there's no end in sight as we read at the end of the passage that they're headed on to other towns so that he could preach and cast out more demons. And so as I read this passage and, and couple it with the passage from last week, I am left with all kinds of questions. And if we had the luxury of being able to gather in person, I might feel so inclined to ask these questions to you. So we can't talk about them together, but I can pose them to you. Like, 
Why does Jesus not allow the demons to speak? Did Simon's mother-in-law want to be healed? Who were the people who, who worked hard to gather up the sick and the demonic and bring them to Jesus that night? And how is it possible but that the sick and the demon-possessed could be at the same place? It was kind of against the cultural mores of the time. Those who were considered unclean would not have been allowed to be in the company of those who were. And is there some sort of significance of Jesus' ministry that included preaching and casting out demons? That's what he says, I have come to preach, but we know he also casted out demons. So do they somehow go together? And then what is it with the demons? Enough of them already. These miracle stories of, of Jesus, these stories of healing and casting out demons, and they're just so far removed from our experiences for the most part. And those of us who are skeptical can read them as stories of magic and make-believe, as stories that don't have relevance for us anymore. As Jesus isn't here, is he? Laying his hands on people and, and commanding them to get up and walk, commanding the demons to leave them. And so we're skeptical. And we're also skeptical, I hope, of those faith healers that we see on television. We're skeptical with good reason. We see the theatrics of their healing, but we never see those who are really ill be cured of whatever that is ailing them. But there's more to Jesus' healing stories than just the one being cured. It's the story of a whole community because when one was healed or set free, they would be free to fully connect with the community, to be part of the community once again. I mean, maybe that's why the community was bringing those people to Jesus, because they longed to be with them again. The power of healing comes to the whole community. A helpful healing service happens in community when we face our weaknesses, our fragilities, our brokenness. A helpful healing service makes space for the power of human touch. When someone anoints the head with oil or embraces another or holds another's hand as they pray together. Then we learn how to be community together with all of our weakness, fragility and brokenness. We learn to sign together so we can communicate with the deaf. We walk slower when we walk alongside someone who is waiting for a knee replacement. We learn about the best way to communicate and support those who are on the autism spectrum so they can be included as fully as possible in the community. And for those who are oppressed and struggling, we provide space for counseling or for meetings, for ways to live in hope. And for those with the afflictions who make it difficult to engage with them, dementia or depression or any other number of things, we still hold a space for them in our community so that they will not be alone. Healing is not curing. Healing is about wholeness. And this is what Jesus does. He makes us whole. He restores us to who we are meant to be. I believe that's what he does with Simon's mother-in-law. He brings her back to her identity as one who serves. And when we think about serving, it's not like she just popped up and made a meal, but, but the word means serving in ministry. That's the word that is used. He restored meaning and purpose to her life, bringing body, mind, and spirit together so that she was exactly who she was supposed to be. And just as painful as it might have been for her to be sick and on the brink, at least that's how I interpret the severity of her illness. So in that same way that, that it was painful for her, it's painful for us too to let go of the superficialities that govern our lives so often. It's painful for us to dig deep, plumb the depths, and to live into our true identities. When we can ask ourselves those tough questions like, what am I really doing here? 
Who am I really? What is God calling me to do and be? Those can be painful things, but we hold those answers. We hold them in our bodies and in our minds and in our spirits. And when we ask those questions, and when we dig deep, and when we find ourselves on the brink, God will work with us and remind us who we are. God will restore us to who we're supposed to be. And if we're fortunate, we will find a community, a tribe who will walk with us who will help us ask the hard questions, support us when the way is tough, and keep pointing us to Jesus. We will find those who will help us find peace by sharing peace with a gentle touch, a hand to hold, a hand to help. And all those hands join together so that the community is made whole as together we seek to be restored to love and to serve. Amen. We give as an act of worship. We give out of our abundance and out of our gratitude. And so I invite you now to give as you are able to support the mission and ministry of our church in this time and in this place. If you would like to get offering to us, the ways that you can do so are coming up on your screen. You can e-transfer, you can drop off a check uh, to our treasurer, to the church office. You can consider signing up for PAR so that your offering comes in monthly automatically or seek out the Canada Helps button on our website. If you are worshiping with us from our Newark United Church congregation, you can see our treasure Allison's address coming up on the screen and we encourage you to mail your checks to Allison. The offering that we give does support the mission and ministry of God's work in this community and in this world. And so we offer this blessing on our gifts. You lift us to our feet so we can walk with you, loving God, and you fill us with your gifts so we may pour them out on those around us. Take what we offer and use them in that kingdom work which strengthens the weary, feeds the hungry, and gives hope to the despairing. Amen. <music>announcements for you this morning. You might have seen on our uh, Facebook page this week that we are challenging you. We're challenging you to get creative. So you may be feeling the weight of winter along with our stay-at-home orders and now it's definitely getting colder and so this we feel is the perfect time to start a creative project. So it can be anything that you like. And we would love it if you posted photos of your project on our Facebook page. And you might consider donating it to our online auction that will be happening mid-April. The uh, church and the hall board are working collaboratively to bring you this auction and you'll be hearing more about that in the coming weeks. But in the meantime, if you do get busy and you do create something, you could keep it in mind thinking about perhaps you might like to, to donate it. But we do look forward to seeing what you are working on. The church does remain closed for worship and other gatherings until further notice. It is just open for staff use at this time. Also, it is hard to believe, but the season of Lent is almost upon us. The first Sunday of Lent is February 21st, just a couple weeks away. And our theme for this year will be Earth as Original Monastery, which is based on a book by Christine Walters Paintner. And we will explore stories and images and lessons from the earth each week. Creation has so much to teach us. And I look forward to exploring these themes together so can look forward to that in the coming weeks.
Also, just a reminder that if you do need to reach me, the best way is always to call my cell phone. You see the number on your screen now and certainly welcome you to call anytime if you need something or just want to chat. Always love to hear your voices. And one birthday that I know of this week, and so a happy birthday to Carolyn Streepkirk, who did celebrate on Groundhog Day on February the 2nd. And so we do hope that you had a lovely day, Carolyn. God of us all, we gather our hearts in prayer and praise. We long for your healing touch, Jesus. Just as you healed the leper and Simon's mother-in-law and countless others, healed both physically and emotionally, we pray that the world would know of your healing touch and your tender and forgiving heart. Walk beside those who are close to giving up hope and where life seems to have no point, where people struggle to make ends meet and wonder how the bills will be paid this month. Inspire us and encourage us to bend down low, to reach out our hands so that they may be of service. Teach us to open our hands to share with others. Give us the power to shake hands with our neighbors. Show us how to join hands with our neighbors to build your kingdom of love. We serve with our hands and with our hearts. We hold in love all those people and places that are on our minds this day. Together we pray for Murray and Jean, Stephanie, Oscar, Marjorie. We pray for those who are waiting for test results, for those who are struggling with deep loneliness, for all those who find it hard to get out of bed and face each day, for all those who are weary. In the silence, we pray the prayers of our own hearts, prayers that are too deep for words. great love thank you for living and loving in us and through us may all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and all beings help us become a community that vulnerably shares each other's burdens and the weight of glory knowing you are hearing us better than we are speaking we offer these prayers in all the holy names of God and we join our voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught us saying our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen
as you get ready to go out and live this week well, go out knowing that God is working hard to restore you into who you were meant to be. Know that God goes with you as you ask those hard questions, as you live into your identity, and as you take that identity out and become part of a community of God's love in this world. Know that no matter where you go, you cannot go where God is not. And so go with God, my friends. Amen.